It's like, hey, they put it on a streaming service. Zack Snyder's like, fuck it. I'm going to put it. I'm going to do it. And literally everyone in their right mind is just like, are you fucking high right now? Hello and welcome to Fuck Your Opinion. This is a movie review show with yours truly, Sean. Today I watched the movie Justice League, but not any old Justice League. The Justice League that we all want, that we care about. The Snyder Cut. I watched the Snyder Cut. And, you know, I'm sure at this point most of you watched it. So, I'm just giving my hot take. Spoilers abound. So, if you're... If you're watching this and you're like, oh, should I watch the Snyder Cut? Should I watch the four-hour Snyder Cut? First of all, fuck off. Why are you even here? Second of all, fuck off. Why are you even here? <laughs> watch the fucking Snyder Cut. Anyways, let's just get to this, shall we? Question number one. Is this better than the theatrical? The absolute crap theatrical two-hour piece of garbage that we got from Joss Whedon? Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, there's a lot more depth and nuance to this. Oh, actually, you know, before, I forget this sometimes. <laughs> Make sure to like and subscribe to this video. Uh, you know, it helps me out. If not, if you don't want to like and subscribe, if you don't want to like and subscribe, you know, you're a piece of shit, you know. You can just be the, sh you can go to the Justice League, uh, Weedinverse and be your shitty self over there. Or you can come to the Snyder Cut version over here, you know, great, great land, great area, and like and subscribe. So that's all I'll say with that. Anyways, back to, let's get back to the review, shall we? So like many people, I was very curious about what this was going to be. Now, I am not a huge comic book movie fan. I watch all of them, but I'm not like, oh my God, guys, I need the Snyder Cut in my life. I am just so desperate for it. I wanted to see it. I was curious about it, particularly because I actually am one of the few people that likes Batman v Superman. Particularly the um, we did a we did an episode on my podcast, the Fuck Your Opinion podcast. You can check out the link in the description below. But I defend that movie. I think it's pretty darn good. And I will side note: I do think the extended version of that is better than this overall. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just talking about Justice League right now. I didn't know what to expect from this. It's like, okay, this is four hours long. This is a behemoth. And Zack Snyder can be really great, but he can also be iffy. So we'll see. We'll see what they give us. And I was very pleasantly surprised because I'm sure everyone's making note of at because everything is extended, everything actually matters, and all the characters are very fleshed out, and it's great. Uh, Cyborg sucked in the original, sucked. Great in this one. Wonder Woman, iffy in the original. Batman, again, Superman, eh, Flash, eh, Aquaman. Like, all these characters were given no justice. I mean, even the fucking bad guy, Steppenwolf given nothing to do in the original Justice League. It's just like plot, 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 plot. And this movie has a lot of time to breathe and just has so much more emotion and is so great and so wonderful because of it. Now, is this like, oh my God, guys, this is a revolutionary new superhero movie? This is like the cream of the crop? No, I think it's certainly one of the better DC movies. and. I much I prefer that this is a hot take right here. I prefer the DC universe than the Marvel universe. Do I hate Marvel movies? No. But at the same time, what makes this movie in particular so great is that it has a directorial touch and finesse that the Marvel movies just utterly lack. Uh I my favorite time period for blockbusters was the early 2000s i'm making a point here because that was when you had this great mixing of like this big blockbuster uh spectacle but also combining that with director's visions you know so you get stuff like 
Pirates of the Caribbean, a series that I just absolutely adore, at least the first three. And what makes those movies so special is Gore Verbinski's directorial flourishes. And similarly, what makes this movie so great is Zack Snyder. Uh, I, I think what I mean, there are so many instances where this comes on display, but the one that you are probably going to notice most egregiously and the one that most people talk about is the Wonder Woman intro scene. And I'm not even going to talk about one. Well, actually, I'm going to talk about a little, little bit of it. But in the Wonder Woman intro scene, when the bad guys walk into the bank, and it's like, I didn't think when I came into this movie that the bad guys in this Wonder Woman intro scene were going to be more fleshed out. But here we are. Everything. You get fleshed out. You get fleshed out. You get fleshed out. Anyways, basically in the original cut, Joss Whedon said, oh, you know, this is running too long. We don't need this to be so long. We're just going to cut, 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 cut. And it sucked. But now we see what Zack Snyder actually intended to do in the first place, which was, hey, we're going to focus on the suitcase the entire time, and we're going to bring curiosity. What is this suitcase? Why are we focusing on it? And it's so awesome because it's in this really sharp focus, so everything else is going on around. We're not seeing, we're, we're hearing the shooting, but we're not really seeing it. And it's so smart. It's so great. It's so beautiful. And it's like, you don't see that. You don't see that in a mainstream blockbuster. Like to have that amount of restraint and focus and direct, directorial style is just really wonderful to behold. And we need, and I bemoan Marvel because it needs more of that shit. It needs more of that touch, that nuance that a really great director can bring that they say, eh, we don't care about that. It's not that Marvel can't tell a good story. I mean, I, I won't lie. Avengers Endgame definitely hit me more emotionally because I was connected with those characters. But at the same time, you know... I. Well, actually, I, I don't know. I was about to say that the Amy Adams storyline, which is more fleshed out in this, um, you know, obviously Joss Whedon cut that one to pieces, which was such a fucking shame because even even Amy Adams' intro scene as Lois Lane is fucking beautiful. And what, jo uh, what I was about to say Joss Whedon, fuck that guy. Fuck Joss Whedon. But what Zack Snyder does a lot in this uh, new cut is there are a lot of great musical montages and a great a lot of great uses of music. So I just want to note that real quick. But going back to what I was saying was uh, Amy Adams' storyline about grief and grieving over Clark's death and her sadness is something that you don't see a whole lot in superhero movies. So I really appreciate that. And it's something that... it. It was really dark and nuanced, and I thought that was great. But that being said, and what I was kind of being like, oh, I'm going to blame Marvel, but actually at the same time, they do kind of do it. They did um, just in WandaVision. This is a slight WandaVision spoiler, but I don't know why you're here. I don't know what you're doing if you haven't watched WandaVision yet. But anyways, in episode four, we start on, um, like, uh, I'm already forgetting her name. Uh, well, God damn it, Monica Rambo. <laughs> Monica, we start on Monica Rambo coming back from the snap, and her finding out that her mom died five years or a couple years ago. That's a really heartbreaking scene. And I guess the difference between those two is Marvel still won't allow you time to breathe, like this movie does. Marvel, even in its sadder, more grieving uh, scenes. And it's more, ref I don't want to say reflective, but it's um, it's more dramatic scenes. It's still kind of like poppy and in your face, where that Lois Lane stuff is not. And I think that it is kind of beautiful. And you know what is also beautiful? All the gore in this movie. I did not think that there was going to be so much blood and guts. But my God, people are getting cut in half uh people are getting like evaporated and really there's a lot of blood in this movie that i did not expect but 
It's like, hey, you put it on a streaming service. Zack Snyder's like, fuck it. I'm going to put it. I'm going to do it. Like, even um, the ending in which they kill Steppenwolf is this just truly fucking great team up moment where they all kick his ass. And then Wonder Woman comes in with the chopping his head off as he goes through the portal. And that is one of the best, like, uh, kills for a bad guy I have seen. I I literally right now don't even remember how they kill Thanos. Oh, it's the reverse snap. It's the reverse snap. Yeah, I mean, the reverse snap is, like, cool. I thought it was, it was powerful for Tony, but it was not, I think, that, as far as the kill itself, like, it was just so fucking cool to kill him that way. Going back a little bit now, I know I'm very scattered. That's just what I do. It's kind of, this is a stream of consciousness. You know, this is just like <laughs> pooping it out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, one of the really striking aspects of this movie, at least striking in terms of, hey, this is really different, is right off the bat, everyone's character intros, some of them are just so abbreviated in Joss Whedon's version. Some of them are just totally cut out. But Regardless, everyone's intros are just so fantastic, and it's one of those things where, like, it's really hard to pick who's my favorite because Aquaman is so badass when he's introed, and I know this is not his intro, but when he goes out into the sea and the it's like this big storm, and he walks out onto the dock and just lets the water overtake him. I don't know; I can't remember if that was in the original or not. But it is just, like, so fucking cool. And how uh, Zack Snyder shoots it and how also color grading, color correction. Joss Whedon fucked that up because he said, I know what I know what Zack Snyder was intending, but at the same time, that's not how I do my own style. So I'm going to brighten it up. And while I personally do like brighter colors, it's like you got to go with what the fucking director intended in the first place because then you, it's just like this thing looks ugly and weird. And that's one of those scenes where Zack Snyder knew what he was doing, what he was intending. So all these little things get so easily fucked up in the editing by Joss Whedon. And Zack Snyder's like, well, you didn't do it right. So things like that or the Wonder Woman scene or, you know, the fucking Flash Barry Allen's intro was totally cut. All, also, all the cyborg stuff. Um, it was so resonant and powerful. Uh, his storyline um, with his mom and his dad is just like, God damn it. It's one of those things where I know there's a lot of controversy with Ray Fisher uh, and uh, Walter Hamada not wanting to bring him back because of just the, the infighting between the two. And I'm just like, guys, if you don't bring Cyborg back, you're fucking stupid you're so fucking stupid and it's it's also going along with that not cyborg but just the fact that i was reading an interview and they straight up told Zack snyder hey i know you're doing this but this is just for funds we're still going off of the original justice league as far as like official dceu and literally everyone in their right mind is just like are you fucking high right now we complain about your shitty ass movies for years. For years, we're like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that wrong. What the fuck are you doing? And then when we finally get this, the thing that we want, that fans are like, yeah, this is what we want. They say, oh, but we can, we don't want to do that. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Seriously, I'm not even a big comic book fan. I'm not even a big DC fan. But like, it's just so mind it's mind boggling how stupid you can be and that like, hey, I know what this is what the fans want and I, I know what people want, but like let's do the worst version. Because why not? I mean, I don't think anyone anyone would be mad at them if they literally took a pause right now and said like you know, let's just like erase our future slate and just refresh. Because, like, oh, God, it's so stupid. Warner Brothers, 
I like you more as a company than Disney because you know Disney is Disney, but you just make such dumb fucking decisions sometimes. I wrote there's a little note, but I wrote that the opening scene of for Wonder Woman is better than the entirety of Wonder Woman 1984, which you know no one's gonna disagree with me on that. Even even Pat Jenkins is probably like, yeah, that scene is pretty great because even. I know I'm going back, but if you rewatch the Joss Whedon cut, and I know I just talked about it before, but flash forwarding to the actual action scene, it's extended. There's more action. There's more when Wonder Woman tosses people around, they actually get slammed into the fucking uh, wall. Like she really does punch them. She like she moves so much more fluidly and coolly, and it's just like. How do you fuck that up? You had the footage. You literally, this is, this is just like, you, you don't have the imagination or understanding to go like, I have the footage. This is not going to really add any time to the running time. Why? 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 And you could say, oh, well, every second count, Sean, like, Joss had to cut it down to exactly two hours because that was what, the directive was well you know what you should have cut instead or at least not added is the fucking at the end when the flash is saving the whole family thankfully that's not in this one because that's clearly the thing that joss whedon added but at the end of the original justice league when they're saving the well they're not saving well they're saving the world right and there's this like lone family or whatever i barely remember that the Flash has to hightail them out in a pickup truck or something that everyone's like, what the fuck is going on here? No one cares about this. So thankfully, that wasn't in this one. Instead, I can't remember. In this one, basically, they lose and Flash has to rewind time in order to save the day. I can't remember if it was done in the uh, original or not, but it was pretty effective here. It was pretty well done here. And I think for the most part, is this mostly the original film? Kind of. It's not like anything drastically differently happens, but at the same time, everything is just amped up and just so much more, it's so much better done. Also, the end, with what I was saying, like, Warner Brothers, what are you doing? The end sequence where, I mean, you know the one I'm talking about, the, the one with the Joker, the post-apocalyptic scene. Why don't we have that movie? What the fuck? We all want that movie. Literally, no one. No, it's just, it, it would be one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in film history to say, you know, we're just not, we're going to tease it, but we're not going to do it. And I think that's one of those things where Zack Snyder's like, I'm going to fucking put it in. I dare you. I dare you. I have the balls. I have the gall to say, you're going to fucking do it because I'm going to put it in here. And Warner Brothers is just going to be put, they're just put in a bad position. We're like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. But really, it's more of damned if you don't because, like, again, why the fuck would you not? Why the fuck would you not? Huh. Martian Manhunter st stuff was kind of forced. Was eh. I didn't like, um, I really liked the scene between, uh, Superman's mom and Amy Adams. So it really was shitty when it turned out to be Martian Manhunter. I think we could have just cut that bit. I don't know why you need to do that, Zack Snyder. Just leave it out. Just have Martian Manhunter come at the end. That's fine. I don't really care about him. I will say the four hours improves the film drastically. And it never, surprisingly, it never dragged. It was always fucking engaging. Zack Snyder is really good at just. Even though his stuff might be more slow at times, it's still extremely compelling. It's always very interesting. So I thought it was great. That being said, I think the problems with it are more so inherently when writing and pre-production and stuff that honestly I bet you was mandated by Warner Brothers. That was mandated by the studio. They're like, do do stuff like Avengers. Do like the big big huge storyline where you know I'm not going to get into it now but 
I prefer Batman v Superman because it's more low key. It's more personal. It's smaller. I like that where this, you know, extremely big stuff at the end just feels so reminiscent of Endgame and Infinity War. It's not that it's not, I don't know if it is trying to copy or not. I think that's just well, all the comics are very similar. You know, you kind of can't help it to a degree, but it's just like, eh, I could live without that. That's kind of you got to deal with it, you know. So see, see Snyder cut. Also, real quick, I want to know. I forgot to say this at the, at the top. I'm wearing this this jacket. I like this jacket a lot. I don't normally wear it because you know the quarantine, the pandemic. But uh, it's kind of like cyborgy. Reminds me of cyborg. So I'm wearing this in honor of cyborg. And you know, fingers crossed that uh we get more cyborg. We get more uh, uh cyborg standalone film. So, uh, yeah, standard cut. I had two thumbs up, but you couldn't see it because of the microphone. Two, th- two thumbs up. Make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you don't do that, if you say, you know, I'm, I'm tuning out right now. Sean, you can fuck off. Well, I say that you, person, sir or madam, are worse than Joss Whedon. Yeah, I said it. If you do not like and subscribe, you are more vile of a person than Joss Whedon. But if you do like and subscribe, then I'm going to put you on a pedestal like Steiner cut. <laughs>